Welcome in Associated Press and Emmy Award winning journalist and communication specialist, former anchor and reporter in major markets and CNN. Pleasure to seek the discovery of where that trust went with Lene Lewis. Lene, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, now, just as we began this segment, we heard a soundbite, which was Laura Ashburn with Howard Kurtz co hosting Media Buzz on Sundays on Fox. And she said, it is just not fair to blame Fox News for misinformation presented on their programming. And according to someone who wrote this for Politics or Politics USA, that's right, Fox News is not responsible for its own content. The buck stops nowhere. Uh, is that maybe the best way to put it as far as the American public is concerned? Nobody seems to have a buck that stops anywhere? Well, I think it's important to consider the landscape of uh, television media when uh, talking about this particular issue. I mean, in this day and age, there are so many choices out there for people to get their news from. And it seems a reasonable assumption, perhaps, that people would gravitate to news sources that reflect their core values and their fundamental beliefs. And so when someone's looking for, you, know, you take one story and you listen to it uh, being reported on several different stations, chances are you're going to get different versions or different interpretations of that story. So it might be fair to say that uh, people gravitate to what makes them feel comfortable in an interpretation of a story, and when they hear it on another station that perhaps doesn't reflect that, uh, that might cultivate some mistrust, and they say, you know what, I don't agree with that, so I'm going to go to this particular news source. And the media outlets have tuned into that and are catering to those particular audiences. Isn't it still the responsibility, though, and you and I, we've been in the media a long time between the two of us, you can certainly make a viewer feel comfortable, but at the same time, don't you still have to give them the facts? Well, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you've heard this saying in newsrooms before. You know, we used to joke about saying, uh, don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. And, of course, that's just a joke. Um, but there might be an element of truth to that uh, in, in casting a, a story that will appeal to your viewers and making sure that they keep tuning in and, and it makes them feel comfortable. And let's face it, you know, these outlets anymore these days don't make it a secret of where they're coming from. You know, everybody knows if you want to get conservative news, where you turn into, uh, where if you want to get a, a liberal viewpoint, people know what station to tune in for that as well. So it's not a secret anymore. There's not this... Um, illusion or, or you know, effort to tell a, a balanced story and, and not come off as uh, coming from any different direction. Uh, I don't think it's a secret anymore. You know, most outlets uh, don't try to hide uh, where they're coming from. In 1993, the first year Gallup asked Americans about their confidence in TV news, 46% said they had a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in it. Now, 21 years later, we have almost no one what happened in those 21 years or what was the driving force or forces, if you will, that made people think, oh, I can just get it as long as it's comfortable. It doesn't necessarily have to be true. Well, you know, that's an interesting question. I would love to ask a lot of people out there who tune into TV uh, and, and get their news from television uh, what happened or what do they think. And, and what I keep going back to is, you know, people gravitate to what makes them comfortable or what they feel, you know, is an accurate uh, accurate sense of reporting. I think it was Mark Twain who said, you know, those who uh, don't read the paper are uninformed and those who do are misinformed. So this is a, a concept, a theory that's been per perpetrated for a very long time. And as even the Gallup poll um, mentioned in their report, this is a question they've been asking for a long time as well, and they've seen that erosion. Perhaps maybe it could be best called evolution of news. And, and it's, you know, uh, as we have all these sources of news out there, uh, people are gravitating again towards what makes them comfortable and it's just adapting and adjusting to uh, what will get the most viewers for their particular outlet. Is maybe something here that we need to discuss and maybe this is one of the, the delineating points here. There is a thing called news and there is a thing called opinion. Mm -hmm. And on an awful lot of these stations, even your local stations, network stations, no matter what it is, you have more than news itself. It used to be if you went to CNN, for instance, you, s you saw a lot of news. That's all it was. But now you have opinionators, you have commentators, you have people who are bringing their other opinions in. Mm -hmm. And is it not fair to say that many times people watch these and the public themselves fails to make the difference between what is an opinionator and what is an actual news report? I think that's a very fair, uh, very fair statement. You know, a lot of times people feel like if they hear it on the news or if they read it in the paper, it's official and therefore it must be true. Um, you know, in light of this recent survey as well, though it kind of implies that people are starting to think a little more for themselves and asking questions, but there's a certain authority that comes with hearing it officially in a setting like this or another newsroom or a, a newspaper. People seem to think that um, if it's out there, it must be true. And you're right, it can perpetuate something that 
that is inaccurate or people not being able to distinguish from opinion from fact because it just seems all very official and perhaps believable. Now here's something interesting as I looked at this because you and I are of the same bend here and I'm constantly watching this and on this show I be uh, very happy to say we try to hit every single angle we try to ask both sides at least so that we get both sides of a story. There is a, a thinking process here from a couple of groups that the trust in the media is down possibly because of bias or paranoia. Now they're asking the question is it because the trustee is less trustworthy, meaning the viewer themselves, maybe they're still, they don't just trust people, or because the trustee is less inclined to trust? It almost seems as if it's what people have been conditioned to over the years by simply watching a lot of opinions and they don't quite know what to trust anymore. And wouldn't it be nice if we could just tune into the news and hear the facts and then go to commercial, right? It just seems like uh, it's, it's a the, the time that we're in and people are having to, uh, to question anything. And again, I think it goes back to the fact that there are so many options, so many choices out there. We're inundated with all different perspectives, uh, different kinds of uh, news out there, whether it's social media. You know, a lot of people get their news off of Facebook clippings that people post on, other, on, on their pages. And then that gets you know, sent on to the next person and on to the next person. And then you've got your television news and you've got the internet and online uh, services. So. Um, you know, there's just so much to choose from. It may be that people out there are just confused and don't really know what direction to go in. Do we need to put part of the responsibility, I guess, on the viewer, the listener, the reader themselves? Because as you pointed out, if you go to a Facebook page and no matter how many friends you have, we'll mm -hmm. go to these pages and you will see reports and you will see a picture and you'll see something that looks official. And it'll be, look at this, isn't this terrible? Isn't this drastic? Isn't this horrible? Yet if you take two or three minutes and if it looks suspicious, kind of like if it smells bad, you, know, you can pretty much tell that something's been sitting out in the sun too long, mm -hmm. that if you do a little research, you can find out that a lot of it, quite frankly, is just that. It's, it's phony, it's made up, it's hyperbole. So maybe it's the, the individual themselves. Folks, really, we're not putting all the blame on you, but let's be honest, there are a lot of people out there who simply will take whatever they see at face value. People need to do a little research themselves, and people need to ask a few more questions, correct? Well, Ed, you might be right. I mean, this could be part of the evolution of news that we're talking about. You know, um, it may, we may be to the point now where people can't just take everything as a given. And like you said, do a little research. Ask some questions. This might be actually good for us because people may start thinking for themselves again and say, you know what, that reporter said that, but let me double check and let me do some research. We've got Google. We've got endless resources now. It might be good for society in general to just start thinking on their own, and maybe this will be what triggers it. I'm curious if it, if it catches you as well because it certainly does me. As we're watching, a lot of local news seems to do this now more than anything else. And, of course, I'll get letters and writes now from my, my friends in local news who will hammer me away at this. But a lot of local news is now relying on uh, Facebook and Twitter mm -hmm. and Tumblr and all the different social medias where they're grabbing their news off there. And we've seen this. I mean, it, quite frankly, where we've seen reports that have come out, CNN got caught with John King at the Boston bombing where they had certain tweets that were going back and forth. They didn't bother to check them. And suddenly mm -hmm. they find out that they were wrong and they had to come out and admit it later. Uh, where even, uh, I think it was Scott Pelley said at one time, that he said our house is on fire and he mentioned that about the media themselves where he took his own business to task and said too often even on CBS we rely too much on social media and we don't check the facts and we don't mm -hmm. check to make sure it's true and isn't that probably the most distressing thing we see now what used to be a a journalistic gathering of news that now it's grab this grab this grab this grab this mm -hmm. pull this it looks good and let's put this up as news well I, I think we're in a very difficult place right now because you know, it would be a mistake to ignore social media. It's definitely a part of our society. It's something that uh, people rely on and something that they gravitate to. But incorporating that into news in a responsible way is certainly something that I don't think anyone's figured out uh, a foolproof way to do that just yet. And so, as you mentioned, there are some mistakes that are being made. And you can't take anything, you know, for granted just because it's on the Internet. You do need time to research it and make sure that it's accurate. And in this day and age, when everything is so immediate and uh, you know you don't have to wait till six o'clock to get the breaking news it's it's going to be difficult to find a way to incorporate that into news responsibly and effectively and accurately uh, without making those mistakes so i mean it's it's a learning process and certainly something that uh, that i think we all need to be very cautious about and we got about 15 seconds left we're never going to put the genie back in the bottle are we 
<laughs> well, maybe it's good to let her out because, as as I as I mentioned, I think we're evolving. This is all uh, very important to discuss. And if people start thinking for themselves and start researching, I think that's fantastic. I think it's excellent to listen to the news, but then question. I mean, that's what what it's all about: asking questions and getting to the bottom of it. How nice! You just hit our mantra right here on the show perfectly, where it comes down to question everything. Nicely yes. done, indeed. Lene, thank you so much for joining us today. Wonderful opinions. We will absolutely talk again. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Um, we have been saying it since the day we launched the show. We will continue to say it uh, as long as we are here. It, quite frankly, is a very simple way. You want to find out the truth? Ask questions. And you just can't be afraid to ask a question of everybody, right? This is Midpoint, where every day here on the Newsmax TV network, we do question everything.